Uh, good. Uh, next up is uh, Sandra Balk from the Leibniz Institute for East and Southeast European Studies in Regensburg, Germany. And she will be talking about the topic digital edition of historical travelogues, the role that transcribers plays. Oh, and you brought a colleague. I hope you can introduce him because I don't have him on my moderation card. Really sorry. Yeah, hello. Um, as mentioned, um, we are from the Leibniz Institute for East and Southeast European Studies in Ringsburg. This is Jakob Merkel and I'm Sandra Balk. And we want to tell you a bit more about our new uh, research project, um, the digital edition of Travelogs, and yeah, the role that transcripts played so far. Um, here, a short uh, overview of uh, what to expect. Um, in our project, uh, we want to build a infrastructure for the analysis and edition of historical travel logs. Um, this infrastructure should enable researchers to encode and um, transcribe different texts um, on one side and on the other side to analyze and visualize them. Um, one of our main questions is how can we encode the material, so travel logs and other um, materials in a way that we can use it to answer complex research questions uh, regarding travel events or um, travel observations. Um, to be able to do this, um, we are working on a digital edition as a use case that combines TEI with semantic web and linked data technologies. And this will yeah, allow us to model data more explicitly um, and therefore enable analysis and visualization of the material. For this use case, we will work um, with the yeah, unpublished records of uh, Franz Xaver Bronner's uh, journey from Aarau via St. Petersburg to the university in Kazan and his way back. Um, and so far, we um, transcribed the first two manuscripts with transcribus and also annotated persons, places, and other events um, with XML um, markup elements. Based on uh, these manually uh, transcribed texts, um, we developed training modules um, for the handwritten text recognition. And yeah, these are to be used for the semi-automatic uh, transcription of other related texts. And about this, this process, um, Jakob is telling you more. Yeah. So uh, since we got quite a large number of manual transcribed pages, we decided to train a language model to automatically transcribe the remaining documents of Bronner's work. So. What I noticed quite early on was that uh, some of the models trained on a smaller subset outperformed the models trained on the larger parts of the data. So I took a closer look at the facsimile and I started creating them. And how did we create? Uh, I did look, uh, uh, did look for any instances where the straight linear structure of the pages is interrupted. In Bronner's case, that means strikes, loose, and additions. On the left side, you can see an example of a flawless page. On the right side, marked in yellow, you can see some of the flaws that I recognized. I then experimented by training on different data sets using pages of different levels of defectiveness. In the end, the model which elevated best, evaluated best was the one where I only excluded those pages which were heavy, heavily flawed. Mm. So why uh, can we improve the model by outruling pages with strike throughs and superlinear additions? Supposedly, the answer lies in the layout analysis. As you can see on the left, Transcribus has no problem identifying the lines on the flawless page, while almost every uh, addition messes up the line segmentation as seen on the right. And little surprisingly, uh, the automated transcription of the uh, flawless page is almost perfect. While deriving uh, from the bad line segmentation, it is defective. Uh, I marked all the arrows in yellow. On the left side, there's only one arrow. Uh, on the right side, you can see whole passages, which are completely nonsense. And those parts correspond uh, with the exactly with the messed up line segmentation why the lines in between are still fine. Okay, and finally, uh, on the last slide, I named some mistakes I made, so you don't have to make them. 
Um, first, Bronner uses Kyrillic letters on a few pages. So when I tried, I tried uh, training on a base model, it failed. Um, since uh, we had enough data to train our own new model, I left it there. But if you don't have enough data and uh, it is possible, it is a consideration to exclude those pages uh, with differing char sets. Uh, second, I think it's worth spending time up uh, in front on making sure that the data you upload is uh, technically correct, since it, since it can be very difficult to find the error causing data afterwards. And third, the transfer of our model to another unseen text caused a significant decline in performance. I was able to get the performance back up by adding some hand transcribed data of the new text. Uh, but the possible takeaway here is that if you plan on using your model on many different documents, it might be good to transcribe few pages of all the documents you want to uh, transcribe with the model instead of transcribing many pages um, of, the sing of a single document manually. To sum it up, uh, even poor data, even data of poor quality could lead to good results if the data is created well. Uh, thank you for your attention and if there's still time left, we could lead to uh, discussion and questions. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Because we're making quite good time. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Um, I'm repeating the question. Did you try to automate the cur curation process so that our online guests can hear too? That's why I'm repeating it. Uh, I did not. I did not <laughs> right now. Uh, Right now, I'm thinking about possible ways to automate it, but um, I think since we are the human in the loop, I think it's always a good idea to leverage our insights to uh, improve the, the models. So maybe automating just for automating sake is not always the best, but if there's a possibility, let me know if you have any idea. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? If there aren't any, um, I have one for you. Uh, have you already discovered the trainable baseline uh, feature? Okay, I was, I was wondering whether that would uh, provide any benefit to you. Uh, I've seen that it's possible. I'm not sure if it's a new feature or if I just uh, overlooked it. Um, I've seen that it is there and I wanted to use it, but I have no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's quite new. Um, I'm not sure uh, what it will do for your reading order. That will probably depend on how you um, yeah, train your baselines. So the, the sequence in which you create the baselines for uh, your ground truth, but that could resolve some of your issues if you train enough ground truth then those in-between lines will probably be recognized a lot better and will mess up your data less. Okay, are there any other questions? If there aren't any, then prepare to get mugged.